you are not man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. When you say a thing, you do it. You are faithful. You are too faithful to fail. You are too faithful to fail. You are too committed to make mistakes. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I can sense it heavily in the spirit realm. A big shocker is about to hit this country. It is strong. Many questions will be answered. A big shocker is around. And I keep hearing the Lord say, prepare, prepare. <laughs> Something is about to eat us. But for us who are in Goshen, the testimony is different. Amen. Don't forget it. The Lord is said to do great and mighty things. And I hear a big amen. amen. Say that amen again loud and clear. Amen. Whether you believe it or not, this year is your year. Amen. You don't have to agree, but I say this year is your year. Amen. Praise God. I'd like you to lift your hands and just give God praise. Just lift your hands and give God praise. Let's bless him, give him praise. Let that praise come from the depth of your heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. All right. All right. You sit down for a while. All right. According to our custom, we will pray from understanding. God bless you, choir. That was a very powerful session. The Lord will keep you. Jesus name thank you Lord we bless your name ancient of days thank you Lord Father. Oh, bless you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I want to show you a few things. And I believe they will help you. Amen. As we sojourn with the Lord. Any form of dream that is signifying a rumor of bad event that the enemy is trying to bring, I stand on this exalted altar and I decree it is damaged now. Now the Lord is addressing that God just addressed somebody's case. And I've come to announce to you if the devil could do it you will not have to see it in a dream. Everything being rumored through dreams that the enemy is trying to bring I damage it now. It shall not stand. It shall not stand. 
it shall not stand. Thank you, Lord. All right, be seated. I want to show you some things. Uh, I'm going to show you some things. But God wants me to go somewhere else first. I want you to hold that word. It doesn't matter what last year or turned out to be. This year is your year. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? There are things, good things, that you didn't plan for in the year that will happen. Don't forget what I told you, that this year is a long one. If at all, at least for the nation of Nigeria. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look at it, Psalms chapter number 80. Now look at this Psalms 80 from verse 1. Give here, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come. Save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Now, go to verse 1. Give here, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. There is a very strong link between Joseph and the illustration of the cherubims. There's a very strong link. Why? Cherubims are very unique creatures. They are not just angels. Alright? In fact, the devil himself was an anointed cherub. Ezekiel described them in a very strange manner. They have six wings. With two, they cover their faces from beholding God's glory. Go up the intensity. With two, they fly. With two, they cover their feet. Meaning they are of no repetition. What is the significance of Joseph? The one who broke through for others to break through. What is the link there? shows that the presence of the Lord will be seen manifestly in folks that can die for him to lead. Alright? Scripture is saying here the reason Joseph could break through for others to see light through his light is because he was led like a flock. So, David was crying to the Lord. He said, give me here. Shepherd of Israel. That is, the nation of Israel itself is strong because God is not just king over them, but he's a shepherd over them. And he said, you are the one who led Joseph like a flock. All right? You led Joseph like a flock. That is why he was of significance. That's why he was able to enter into a reality that others could not enter. You are the one that dwells between the cherubims. Shine forth. And as I look at this scripture, it keeps communicating something to me. 
that the one that will take the oil to lead will be the one that God can lead like a flock. Why am I saying, what have I, been, what have I been doing or saying all I've been saying, including in the morning prayers? It's because there are certain principles about God that if you know them, huh, then you migrate from being among those that knows his act to being part of those that knows his ways. Now, in my office there, the, the table has three drawers. All right? Sometimes I try to close those drawers and then they hang. A lot of you have tables with such drawers, they just hang. After some stuff, some push, push here and there, then they close. Sometimes I leave it like that. So when these guys come to clean, they will close it. <laughs> Amen. Sorry, ushers. <laughs> but even before coming out, I still tried pushing, then it entered. I can't repeat doing it tomorrow morning night to enter once. Because the principle that makes it enter, I've not understood it yet. My result will be consistent when I know it. See, it takes repetition for knowledge, for light to dawn. That's why I'm repeating this again. There are certain things that when you know them, you get the result always. Yes. How often? How often? How often? How often? Always. If you say the ways of the Lord are mysterious, they are demystified in Christ. Christ is the demystification of those ways. Let me show you a scripture. 1 Timothy chapter number 3. Go to the last three verses. Okay. These things I write unto thee. Write I unto thee. Hoping to come unto you shortly. But if I tarry long, and thou mayest not thou oughtest be able to yes. Go to verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached on to Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. The mystery is great. But the mystery has been made manifest. In the flesh. Mark 4 11. What I'm saying now is foundation. I'm going to tell you some very tough stuff. I'm going to pray. Now, read this scripture. One, two, three, go. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries. Now, let me show you the importance and how following God's voice will make you rise on time. Let me say this to you. To ignore God is not carelessness. It is pride. <laughs> to ignore God is not what? Carelessness. It is what? Pride. Ignoring God is not carelessness. It is what? Pride. Pride in the sense that it shows you have what it takes to get your result. Let me show you what the spirit realm looks like. Dunamis, come. I need I need Three brothers and three sisters. Quickly, make your way here. Three sisters, yes, come. Yes, yes, thank you. Then three brothers, yes. Now, I want the three sisters to stand here and face this side. 
One in front, stand in front of each other like you're an assembly count. Yes. Uh huh. Are you okay? According to your, you went, you I mean, you must be a prefect. Then, the three of you stand here. Let me see. Yes. Are you following what I'm saying? No, face me. Face me, three of you. Like assembly ground. Yes. Now, this is the child of God. This is goodness, mercy, peace, prosperity. Apologies. This is trouble, sickness, headache, confusion. In the spirit realm, these two opposite entities are always in motion. They are always in what? They are always in what? Somebody say it loud and clear. They are always in what? They are always in what? Motion. Always in motion. And this is somebody who is asking God, Lord, I have a decision to make. And because you also you are in motion in life. And you are asking, God, where do I turn? Where do I turn? Now, these three can be resident in a spouse. And these three also resident in a spouse. <laughs> One person can be a truckload of trouble, a truckload of headache, truckload of sickness. Truck since the day you marry that fellow, everything started going down. You don't marry such. Yeah. And you are saying, Lord, where do I turn? As you are moving in life, you get to certain junction like this. This junction may be a WhatsApp group and go say enter. <laughs> oh, guy. But on that train, already loaded there, are resources that God has trapped. Are you following what I'm saying here? You say, I'm not going to join. I'm not, I will not join. That program does not look like a program I want to attend. And God said, attend. Not for the knowledge. I have something for you there. This is how I met my wife. She joined a WhatsApp group. God bless the day she joined. God told me, say, gather media people all over the nation and teach them for three days. I taught fire. But somebody joined. Hear me. I'm trying to show you a mystery. You say, no, I'm not, I'm not turning that direction. Or you just ignore that impulse of the spirit. You go. Now, you, you have something that is a constant waiting. Trouble, headache. This one may rotate back. But it will take God to call another WhatsApp group. But this one is, the probability of eating this one is like 90%. It will take extra obedience to come back to this. And then all of a sudden, you say, I, I saw something, I'm interested in doing it. And then you just join yourself with this chariot. These two are consistently in motion. Peace, headache, sickness, health, prosperity, death, in motion. Have you seen cases where somebody just step out of the house? And say he doesn't know why he stepped out and a car just cleared him and dead. Something was in motion, he entered the equation. Are you following what I'm saying? What I'm teaching you is that the moment you understand the pattern of being led like a flock, it will lead you to the path of peace and godliness consistently. All the days of your life, your journey will be fast and sweet. You will not miss your time zone. I pray again, you will not miss your time zone. I pray again, you will not miss your time zone. Let me tell you something. In the spirit realm, our instructions are not like balls. When, when God says, do this, every time you obey, you are connected to a rope. Every obedience is a long chain. Such that you, you can seem to have seen the immediate, but there is still a potential. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes. 
God gives you an instruction, move to Ibadan. It, 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 no, your experience in the first one month is not the total totality of it. There's a long rope. No, there's a long rope. Thou that leadest Joseph like a flock. So, meaning that sometimes the part that is a part of goodness, godliness, breakthrough, initially looks like a part of tons and tissues, but it is the leading of the Lord. As long as it is God leading, you come back with the result. Are you following what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, are you following what I'm saying? So, many Christians pray, but goodness is moving. Keep moving. Mercy, favor. God says, join that chariot. Say, Lord. Oh, gosh, I'm waiting upon the Lord. I'm waiting upon the Lord. You may decide to wait for two weeks and your answer comes in the first day. The remaining activity should be thanksgiving. Oh, God. Do you get what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? And God is saying, join yourself with that child. Fasting yourself too. Any man that God will lift, he lifts the man through instruction, through impulse, through light. Many Christians have this as they experience confusion, different kind of sorrow, pain of all kinds. They keep ignoring God and they keep, and God is every way God is leading them is away from these realities. And this keeps becoming their experience. And they struggle. They struggle. And they struggle. It is not everyone that gets out of their wilderness experience till they die. Yes. There are people who are going through wilderness experience. They will never break through from it because they will never learn. This is a year to follow his leading. He has to lead you like a flock. He has to lead you like a flock. He has to lead you like a flock. He has to lead you. That's why you are going to pray. I will not miss your leading. Engineer me. Engineer me, Lord. To be attentive and sensitive to the movement of the Spirit. I won't miss it. Thank you. You may be seated. Church, pray. Engineer me, O Lord. Engineer me, O Lord. Engineer me, Lord. Engineer me, Lord. I choose to follow your instructions. I choose to follow your instructions. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please be seated. Let me share some things. I don't readily share, except I'm talking to ministers. 
when I got to service, I had plans. One of those plans is that I was never going to go back to Ife. Never. We began to pray. I remember when my president said we should pray that prayer. That despite the fact that we have plans, God speak and give us your own plans. I didn't want to pray that prayer because my life has not been characterized with funny leadings. I have not prayed for 10 minutes when God said, go back to Ife. There are some of you who are, who are careful not to pray some prayers. If God is saying, go to Nineveh, if you like be swallowed by a fish, he will not send you to Tashish. <laughs> Nineveh is what? But some will spend all their days in the belly of it. Because inside there, they will not repent. Go back. Was it yesterday night or some days ago? The Lord was rebuking me. He said, you have been staying my hand away from my ministers. Say, Lord, how do you mean? Whenever I meet somebody who is coming freshly to ministry, I start helping them draw structures to make sure they don't suffer. Help them go it like this. You will not. God said, you are staying my hands from my ministers. Say, you went through yours and it deposited something in you. Let my ministers be trained by me. Interfere only when I call you. You know, in following God's leading, it is not every good thing that has reward. Sometimes you give to a man that God wants to teach faith. You stand between God and that man. When we got our first venue in Moro. Guess we're there. Where's Annie? All of you emptied your account. Some of you, you emptied your account. Buy paint. You were part of those painting. You short liquor. And myself, we singlet. After that day, I wanted to commit suicide. Because the, I will just quote the story. The devil just brought somebody who spoke a word and said, all you want to do with your entire life is ministry. You want to live a useless and a life of poverty. And because, you know, a word cannot break you. If the enemy has not laid foundation of the same word. I said, God, let me prove to these people that my life is not useless. <laughs> let me prove to them I didn't copy books to get my degree. Lose me and let me go. And I entered depression. And in those days, God will not console you. <laughs> he will not. If God wants to raise my mature son, he won't tell you sorry. I have given you instruction that you choose who you listen to. If you are a son, by the time you are done being angry, you are still the one that will beg God. Sorry, Lord. Have mercy. And God will now say, now that you are set, sit down. This is what we are going to do. There is no better thing I'd rather be doing with my life than that instruction. Are there pains on this journey of that instruction? Yes. 
There's nothing as painful as having to trust God for another fellow human being for food. There's nothing as painful as going to minister and they are telling you bye bye and you know you are entering into a bus you don't have money to pay. There's nothing as painful as all your family members not seeing you as useless because you went to school, paid expensive money only to say you want to be a pastor. But if God says that is the way, then surely goodness and mercies shall follow you. Why am I telling you this story? I am saying it takes time to know who is blessed. It takes time to know who is doing fine. All that matters is that what you are doing, it is God who is instituting it. Some of you are too carnal to survive following God. Because you can't wait for 10 days to compare who is better. And 10 days may be 50 years. Do you get what I'm saying? Daniel, Shadrach, and Abed, they will feed on what? Balls, that's vegetable, beans, and water. Then check after 10 days. If you are too much in your hurry to prove you are not doing bad, you do bad. As long as it is God instructing it, you will end up like Joseph. You come with a scepter of leadership. But if it is not God, you will suffer. It doesn't matter how juicy your options are. God is all out to show a proud man that pride doesn't work. Are you following what I'm saying? Church, are you following what I'm saying? Many of you are at very critical junctions of decision making. Good. Let's pray that same prayer. God, if you are not the one calling for what I'm doing now, scatter it. Give me your own plan. Yes. Give me your plan. I'm going to give you enough time to pray it. Give me your plan, Lord. Give me your plan. I choose to follow your precept. Give me your plan. Give me your plan. I choose to follow your precept. Give me your plan. Give me your plan. Speak to my heart, O oh God. Speak to my heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Sit down. When God is leading you towards greatness, the reason why he will not pamper you is so you can survive. When you get there, you survive. I say you survive. Look at that same Psalms, chapter number 80. Psalms, chapter number 80. Look at it. Let's look at verse 17. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. Upon the son of man whom you made strong yourself. Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, o, o Lord, God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. That's the man you are leading. If you are, you are, you are, don't live life as it comes. Don't try what works. Do what he instructs. God has a say in everything, including your jobs. He has a say. 
in your relationships. He has the same. If you ignore God and do life your own way, you will seek God later. But seek him now when he may be found. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Seek him now. Instructions. There are some of you that the instructions God will be giving you in this season will be coming with rebuke. You are doing something one way and all of a sudden you notice that the same thing you've been doing that been bringing results, you are doing the same thing now and you are losing your peace. God is saying, become more proficient at it. Become more excellent. As good as God is, he will not do for you what you should do by yourself. Are you following what I'm saying here? He will not do for you what you should do. He's the lifter of men. He's the lifter of men. I said something to you this morning. God will give you the kind of result that he can defend legally. Yes. No, no, listen to me. I, I understand that we have taught about mercy, but some of us have overstretched the ministry of mercy. Can it be overstretched? Yes. The fact that it is mercy is not a proof it can be abused. There is no body that God lifts that God cannot explain the reason why he lifts the fellow. To think God just lifts somebody while the fellow has nothing to offer because he is God is to not know who God is. No, sir. This mentality has excused mediocrity amongst us. It is the reason why people would rather pray and not develop themselves in the area they should develop themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? If all you will do is pray. You will have breakthrough before God, but you may not be able to stand before kings. Because if you look at the life of Joseph and the life of Daniel, they had both spiritual and intellectual intelligence. Sometimes you lose your peace. You've been praying about finance. Just lose your peace. And this season is like God is saying, Go and learn forex. Can God say, Go and learn forex? Yes. I shared the story of a friend I had. He didn't, he was not in full time ministry. A prophet came to meet him and said to him, Don't go for service. Because the day. God is going to, the fellow that God will use to lift you will come with his leg from America and enter your house. You know the way they put it? Your face are in war. Those who are more. It sounds like he's a more. You more law by as if foul or city. You didn't do anything. You solved no problem. What an amazing God that is. Nothing. Just sit down. You didn't ask the prophet what year would that fellow come? <laughs> God help you. That's a 50 years prophecy. Because till date that fellow has not come and I knew this fellow about 10 years ago. Fellow who just wait. Dress. Wear tie. And trust you for bread to eat the beans he wants to eat. Because the prophet said this. You must understand the ways of God. He will instruct certain things. Some of you have not, you have not opened your school books since the day you graduated from school. And something told you you'll be a lecturer. Amazing. You will lecture your children. You will teach them about Moses. See, I just know it in my spirit. How? Do you think God push, pushes mediocrity out? Talk to me, sir. While I was on campus, I told all my high schools. I said to them, I said the rule number one, God is not a God of shame. If anyone here gets a carryover, will stop you from being an escort. So you can go and face your academics. 
there are instructions. You see, you might, you might be spiritual and you are getting it wrong, given in that area. You know what I'm saying? Some of you, some of you are you are super spiritual, you are not supernatural. You keep hearing instruction to pray, to pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. But has he instructed you to invest? As he. When Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, What is the solution? Joseph did not say prayer. Huh? The wisdom of God instructed a practical means to get the problem solved. It doesn't matter how much God bless you. The blessing will take the shape of your mindset. <laughs> Is somebody following what I'm saying? As we are fasting and praying, many of you need to ask God. You are doing the same thing you did in 2020 this year again. You have started. You have started again. You wake up in the morning, you quote the same scripture. You have started. Hope is powerful and both deadly. The reason why some people will never break through in life is because they are hopeful it will suddenly happen. Decision a man should just reverse now, now and do what is wise. He just believes tomorrow will be different. The devil is the only one that instructs you to eat your cake and tell you it is still available. Somebody is not doing the right things and the devil, you know, the devil can inspire dark faith and he's telling you tomorrow it is fine. When the devil tells you tomorrow is fine, it means you have eaten it. <laughs> the, de the devil is all that tomorrow. Somebody is making a grievous mistake that should be retraced now. Now! And the devil is painting the image of tomorrow. I say tomorrow is good. And the fellow is hopeful. That's the kind of hope that destroys. That's the kind of hope that sinks. That's the kind of hope that kills. Everybody, your neighbor who tells you you are saucy, say they don't like me. You hear what I'm saying? You are just, you just believe. Regardless of them. I mean, in a month, about 10 people have walked out of your life. Of the way you talked. You say, Wito, they are enemies, they are haters. You post picture on Facebook, say, All my enemies to hell with fake friends. You get what I'm saying? And people come with different potentials and blessedness they can bring. And they carry those blessings and walk out of your life. And you are still hopeful, you are intact. You are far gone. Many of you have been praying, but you are stubborn. You are more stubborn than the donkey of Balaam. Stubborn. The things that will change your story. Put the prayer down and go and follow what your father said. Your dad has been correcting you. I hear from people they see me in the office and say, I don't like my dad. Just stuck, 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 stuck. I say, okay. Because you don't know whether me that you are reporting to I might be worse than your dad. I say, hold on. The talking, 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 talking. What are the content? What, what is he saying? What is the emphasis there? Is he saying you are lazy? Do you get what I'm saying? Is he saying you are lazy? Is he saying you are disobedient? He's not a dog. He can't be barking. There's a content there. How do you know dangerous people? They say, I don't know what he's saying. Just talking. I have seen people who are praying genuinely. But you know they can't break through because they are stubborn. Until God can lead you like a flock, you won't break through. 
And if you are expecting Jesus to come down from heaven to instruct you, oh, you missed. There are instructions that if those fake hope will die now, and you go back and take those instructions, you will do well. God cannot just instruct you to move to a city without giving you an activity in the city. Clarity. Go! Yes, Lord. Paul asks two questions. Who are thou? You know the reason why God used him more? He was the only one who asked, what will you have me do? He was a doing man. If I'm going to follow this Jesus, I'm not ready, I'm not a, I'm not ready to waste my time. Jesus, what will you have me do? I'm not here for fun. Some of you need to, need to ask that question. I tell people who are called to ministry, if God has not instructed full time and you do it, you will go full hunger. Empty stomach. And these instructions comes, but we are too busy. We are too proud to take the instructions. As I'm speaking now, God is going to be resurrecting corrections and instructions given to you that you did not obey. That in it lies your breakthrough. See, what, I'm, what is happening here is a prophetic meeting. You will hate your parent, but you like your pastor. Because your pastor teaches you the heavy rema. But your parent are saying, do some practical things. And I'm coming back to say, in those things, there are some wisdom there. You know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying now? Yes. You are going to have your practical template. When I say practical template, you can't get template for your spiritual life and your finances by faith. You will have faith in the area of the instructions he has given. It has to be practical. Now, this is how I live. Lord, what will you have me do? Practically. Having gotten this, because faith comes by hearing. When the instruction is there, I can now trust God in the line of that instruction. But to not have instruction and trust God is not to trust God at all. Are you seeing that following this kind of chariot will require plenty humility? You get what I'm saying? When a man is on the wrong lane, the message for him is not consistency. It's repentance. Many of you joined the wrong chariot in 2020. And God will have you take a different activity in 2021. May you be humble enough to follow him. Amen. Say that amen loud and clear. Amen. Say that amen again with power. Amen. I'm going to give you another five minutes. You go on your knees. Lord, a practical template for this season. What will you have me do? Practical. Practical template, Lord. I receive the wisdom for this season. Instructions. I am not adding my heart against them. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Practical. Instruct me. My finance. Ministry marriage academics I don't want to journey with assumption I don't want to journey with assumption practical instruct my heart Lord instruct my heart practical Lord help me show me what to do Lord show me your way show me what you are doing Show me what you are doing. Show me what you are doing. Show me what you are doing, Lord.
Gashina, Gamuna, Sakin Haljana, Yanana, Gashina, Gamuna, Yanana, Sakin Sarakuna, Yanana, Yanana, Sakin Sarakuna. Ya na na, sevikin sarakuna. Ya na na, ya na na, sevikin sarakuna. Ya na na, sevikin sarakuna. Ya na na, ya na na, sevikin sarakuna. Ya na na. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Rise to your feet. We are listen. Amen. We are not going to hold any service that you will leave church and not know what to do next. While on campus, I told some people. Most of them didn't graduate. I told them, I love the fact that you are busy for Jesus. I have been pastoring the campus fellowship since part one. Part one. And I was still pastoring a church in town. Part one. All right? And I told them, I said, listen to me. If you fail to study hard and you say fellowship is what to put on your head, by the time fellowship is doing catch them young for freshers and they are saying in this house their success, their success they will use the pictures of those who are not as serious as you but who passed failure is an orphan failure is an orphan many of you have heard wrongly and have come with apostolic rake, shove to uproot all those things if you will be humble to let... See, there are things that the Holy Ghost is no longer talking about. Not because you are right, but because he has spoken, you have chosen your way and he has moved on. Do you get what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? When messages like this comes and he sees that now you are ready to listen, he will now tell you the same instruction again. That's when your time start counting back. Brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. There are practical things that God will inspire in your heart. That when you take them seriously, you will get the result. They are practical. Huh? They are practical. Some of you will just see the instruction and the Holy Ghost will tell you this here. Pick up your master's. Pick up your PhD now. By the grace of God, God told me years ago, he said he's going to give this ministry will have a university. No, it's not a thing of amen. God says it is going to do it. You get what I'm saying now? And I said to myself, we will not have a university where I will have to go and be hiring prof to represent me doing what I have to do. Spiritually, intellectually, academically, I have to be fit for what is coming. I'm not going to be a pastor that if you take Bible from his hands, he has no more relevance. Do you get what I'm saying? Here? There are certain things if you get right, you will be able to pray for that. In fact, you'll be able to worship God. Just get them right, practically. This year, there are things trapped in it, but most of them are results. I mean that they are effects of a correct action. You get what I'm saying? They are effects. These things are... Hold on. You believe in God's grace upon my life, am I right? And I'm the one standing here to tell that God instructs practically. Do this. Jesus did not tell Peter 
that put your net back into the boat and you will catch. Say, launch it. He didn't say, Peter, remove your net and then trust me for. He said, launch it. A result will come, but it will instruct something. And you must hear it. Are you following what I'm saying? Some of you, some of, some of you need some of you need courage to obey the instruction. There are some of you looking at me now that you ate your university certificate. It is the reason why you have not gone anywhere to table it. You ate your polytechnic result. You ate those results. You keep hearing that God is saying stay. No, it is the hatred for it that is not letting you. You ate it. You feel you deserve better. But you will swallow your pride. Ah, no. You what? I know I am not stupid. And I know what I'm saying. Even if all of you are looking at me like you are all fine. I know there are people that these words are meant for. Am I right? Yes. You will swallow your ego. You will now humble yourself. And now do what God wants you to do. Lord, every instruction I heard wrongly, that is the result of sufferings in my life, expose them. Expose them. Expose them. Expose them. Expose them. Sekin Sarakuna Yanana Yanana Sekin Sarakuna Yanana Sekin Sarakuna Yanana Yanana Sekin Sarakuna Yanana Sekin Sarakuna Yanana Yanana Sekin Sarakuna Yanana In Jesus name we are praying. People of God, there is nothing that we can't drop. There is nothing. What did I say? There's nothing we can't drop. I have seen people table instructions they say they had and they are wrong. And, and I don't hesitate to say this rubbish. And see, you can go and pray for 40 days and the devil will speak first. Yes. That's why you, that's why you have to. In multitude of counsels, the safety. My wife said something this afternoon. Said many people are in trouble because they have no one else to talk to except their oppressors. And that, that statement sank within me. Sank. Some of you have shared wrong visions with too many people that you are now ashamed to say God didn't say so anymore. I know these things. There are many pastors in ministries who are waiting for God to break through for them that if only they knew that that aspect of ministry they are running with, God didn't call for it. God didn't call for it. They thought they heard him, but he didn't call them. He may call them, to, but that aspect, he didn't call for it. Praise God. You will tell God, I am not too, too big to renounce instructions I've received as a mistake. Listen, you will pray like this. Holy Spirit, ventilate my heart with clarity. Ventilate my heart. Clarity. Ventilate my heart. With clarity.
Clarity, Lord. Clarity, clarity, clarity. 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 I am not confused. I do not run with the wrong instructions. I do not run with the wrong perceptions. Ventilate my heart with clarity. Ventilate my heart with clarity. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Amen. Now, sit down. Let me tell you the reason why God gives grace to the humble. It is because the humble are not too big to retrace their steps. Every now and then, even the most anointed fellow can miss it in terms of hearing God. Yes. There are times that you think you have heard God, but you have not heard him. It happens to everyone. There are things you will think you have heard, but you didn't hear God well. One of the mistakes we make is that we don't incubate them in the place of prayer. We just begin to share them. Too many years have now heard them. Then you are now confused as to how to tell them that you were wrong. I am almost pressed to say the biggest challenge people who are small have is stubbornness. Because every now and then, God will allow the picture of what is going to be the chairman over smallness in their life. You make it apparent to them. That ability to say, nevertheless, let your will be done. That's the mark you see in great men. Isaiah 51 verse 16. Isaiah 51 verse 16. Very interesting scripture. I'm sorry. Psalms. Sorry. Psalms 51 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in the bottom. Now, don't forget what Samuel was saying to Saul. I think 1 Samuel chapter number 15. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And to hearken than fat of rams. Obedience. And I said something to you in the morning that delayed obedience is as worse as disobedience. Because when you obey, when you have missed the season, you it of no importance. And Samuel said, As the Lord, at the Lord, great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to hearken than fat of rams. 23. For rebellion. Rebellion. You know, the word is us that is in bracket there was the word that was later added. The root word here is for rebellion, the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness, iniquity, and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. What was the issue with Saul? Impatience. Stubbornness. Amen. I said amen. You know the reason why I'm very careful in what is being heard in the beginning of this year is because Many people have had, they've had 10 years repeat themselves the same way. And they are not going to change strategies. They keep praying, but they are not checking what am I not getting right. The part of the just ought to be a shining light that shines brighter. If you don't obey, if you obey God partly, you will be qualified for the smallest part of your inheritance. It ought to be yours. Praise God. Shh. 
Shakila happy lucky there are prayers you pray most time most of us are too we are I don't know how to put it now there are prayers you pray you enter the prayer room with your daughters all right I didn't bring my current daughter you will see there instructions of God for marriage. Instructions of God for year 2021. Instructions for the church. Instructions for this. Instructions for that. And I was saying something the other time. I was not, I'm telling you, I said I'm not deceiving myself. What God said, the instruction for the year, alright, this is what we are going to see. Put this in place. Put that in place. You will see this. God is not a fool. He will not just promise you without saying do something. Alright, God was saying, son, do this. If you put this in place, do that. And then, my blessing will come on this. But make sure you put this. Don't bother about how you are going to sustain this in terms of provision for this. I'm going to do, I'm going to raise people for you in this area. Alright, but you can start this. When you start from here, I will pick it up from there. So, you take this, do this. When I do that, the result that comes cannot be a surprise. Practical stuff. The year is starting. This is these are the postures I want to take next year. Every new season is characterized with new instruction. Your birthday is coming. Your new you, your new year. You don't approach them casually. You will have the same old year and the new. You don't have new instructions. Are you following what I'm saying here? And sometimes these are the mistakes we make. We are we have been Africanized in our faith. There are things God will never use you for if he has not prepared you for them. Are you following what I'm saying here? I mean, God is calling you to ministry and then you, I mean, he wants you to be a blessing to a political sector and influence that world and then bring his influence there and then all those things. You must have more than, you must have more to bring to the table than just prophecy or who become governor or president. Alright? You must have the wisdom that can make the intellectuals listen. God is going to use you to affect the economy of the land. You hear what I'm saying now? I had the vision. I saw, I saw myself standing at United Nations meeting. I said, listen to me. This is not just about preaching the gospel. There's a practical thing God will use my life to solve. When those doors now open, we may enter with Bible. No, we may. We will now enter with Bible. But something else will have to. The anointing will come upon to make something manifest. You can't take John 3.16 to United Nations and then they open the door for you. I mean, for example. I see Christians. I say, do you know TED Talk? They say, what's TED Talk? You don't know TED Talk. You are an entrepreneur. Do you know about dragons then? I say, what's dra dragon? I reject dragon in my life. I say, okay, fantastic. What's your, who is your financial mentor? Financial mentor, uh, I follow AJS. And I'm, I'm not born in fire. Oh, fantastic. What do you see in the field that you belong to that is going to cause for? Some can't even dream anymore because they are not seeing anything. Praise God. I don't, I'm not part of those who fantasize traveling out of Nigeria. <laughs> In my life, I don't like begging, both for visa or anything. You either make me a solution or leave me here, Lord. Simple. I'm not part of the Nigerians that want to japa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do I like this country that much? No. <laughs> I'll take that. Are you fooling what I'm saying? Are you kidding me? Look at the way I'm sweating with AC. 
You get what I'm saying? Many of you are just. So what are you doing? Say I'm hustling. Would they find way? Which way they find? You will hear a voice behind you saying, "This is the way. Walk in it." There's a way that seems right to men, but at the end of it is destruction. You get what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? How long will it take you to finally trust God? A very serious question. As the year was starting, I told those that are directly accountable to me, I said, give me, send mail to me. All right? Give me the summary of what your 2020 looked like and then the vision of 2021. And I began to read and I, I mailed some of them back. I said, everything you wrote about 2021 are achievable in January alone. How will you tell me you are looking forward to what to achieve in 2021? I said, this year, I'm going to see the hands of God like never before. I'm going to become deeper in prayer. I'm going to study my Bible more. Um, this is a wish, not a goal. A wish are desires without any commitment. This one will not inspire any commitment. I say, and some of them will want to even, they want to bulldoze me with spirituality. So help me God. Thank you, Papa, for taking time to read this. I know you can discern. Discern what? <laughs> There's no, the fact that we have entered 2021 is not a proof your level will change. What new thing do you want to obey to change the level? That's the thing. <laughs> By the time I start putting my own ingredient, God has said, you will know. When you're on a bike, and God will soon take you from bike in the name of Jesus. I went to ShopRite in the year 2016. I saw they were begging a boy to climb bike. He was afraid. He had never climbed bike in his life. I looked at him. And I was saying to myself, oh boy, climb that if I slap you. <laughs> what do you mean? We have been climbing bikes from the womb. He had never climbed back. Praise God. By the grace of God, I know the blessings of the Lord is upon my life. But I won't have stupid children. In those days, I shall drive them to Mokola. And I shall tell them, come down from my car. <laughs> Alright? Find your way to where you are going. <laughs> when you are done, meet me at home. Thank God your mother is not here to see what I'm doing. Come, come down. <laughs> you are sick. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. You say, uh, Daddy, what the hell you on? Calm down, my friend. What do you mean? <laughs> when I came to this city, I didn't have a buck. I didn't have any car. Calm down. What do you mean? Take bike. Let them come to church and share testimony of kidnappers almost taking them. I say, thank God. You can't, that you can't be kidnapped. And if they collected your phone at Computer Village, okay. When you, you get what I'm saying, they took iPhone, give you fufu. Yes. When you learn well, you go back and then you will know what is obtainable. We don't raise fools. Praise God. I've been saying this before I got married. Some of you think when I get married, I will, I will, I will not say. I'm still saying it. I bless those children as they are where they are. All right. Come down with sense. <laughs> Come down with sense. Praise God. I said praise God. Practical. Instructions. Practical. Some of you don't know that realm exists, but now you are knowing. In, see, from the instructions, you will start mirroring what the next season will look like. Yes. From... <laughs> God is saying, do this. Wow. Sometimes there are things you have not thought of. 
Sometimes there are things that you have thought of that you wanted to do. God said, hold on, when the time comes. Start occurring to you that God is about to bring you into this. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. You know, day before yesterday, I was talking to you about covenant practices that God will inspire in your heart. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with it. He will tell you, give yourself to this. There's a blessing on it. Say, how? Oh, say, give yourself to that. And it will inspire other sons. How many of you have been in places where God was instructing you to do something? And while you were still contemplating about starting, somebody else started it. Huh? To tell you that instructions does not just come to you, they go into the air in the spirit realm. You are many that are taking that at the same time. Don't take yours for granted. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't take yours for granted. And when a man obeys your instruction before you, they enter into the reward. They enter into the what? To the reward. They enter into the reward. Now, I'm giving you the assignment. You go back to God. Practically now. What are the things you want me to do this year in the area of my finance? Write them out. Not, it will not just instruct practices. It will also involve covenant commitment. Son, daughter, do this. Do this. Then you see my hand in this area. Do this. You see my hand in that area. Do this. See my hand in that area. Yes, Lord. Then you start seeing changes. That's Psalms 113 verse 7 says, He raises the poor out of the dust. He lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may sit him with princes, with the princes of his people. He grants the barren woman home like a joyful mother of children. You will not fail. Rest your feet, people of God. Um, te- there's no secret anywhere. This is the secret. That you will, I mean, I'm always eager. What is the next thing you want me to do, Lord? Yes, Lord, speak. What is the next thing? Sphere of light, church. Things will not automatically be different. True or not true? Yes. What do you want us to do as a church? Start seeing the result. This morning, I want to permanently decree everything you are obeying wrongly. From today, you will lose your peace over them. Everything you thought God said that he didn't say, you will lose your peace over them. Everything you thought God instructed that he did not instruct, you will lose your peace over them. From today, you pick up new opportunities. You pick up new instructions. You pick up new strategies. You find help in the name of Jesus. You pick up new strategies. You pick up new strategies. You see them. Your eyes of understanding is flooded with light. You see well. It is done. In Jesus' powerful name, we are prayed. You know, there are two things that scriptures highlighted that you need.